Hey guys, it's Tyler from Cali Critic Reviews, and it's that time of the week again for yet another DVD and Blu-ray collection update video. Now before I really get started with the video, though, I want to thank all of you for helping me reach over 300 subscribers and up to 336 right now. And shout out to subscriber number 300, which is Prime Forever Movies, and his all these channels are below if you can't see already. And the second one is to Shit on the Globe 100. He reviews bad movies, he even takes your requests for them, he puts them into parts, makes fun of the trailer, reviews the film as well, so check out his channel below too. And last one is to Rival Film Studios. He does weekly reviews reviews every week. He did one of Speed and Speed 2 the week before and he also had one for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World for the video game, comics, and movie. So check out his channel below. He's a cool guy too. So check out all three of those channels and subscribe to them. But now it's time for what you guys came here for. So let's start the show now. Since I only have a few DVDs with me, I'm going to start with those and just get them out of the way. And God, I'm looking at myself. My hair looks horrible with this hat right now, so I'm going to get that off. Alright, so typically I'm not a huge fan of director Joe Johnston that much, even though I do like a few of his films. He's directing the upcoming Captain America movie, which I'm really psyched for. But this movie I bought of his really means a lot to my childhood because I used to watch it all the time. Just like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which is his debut film. And it's Jumanji with uh, Robin Williams. I love this movie. It has great special effects. And, uh, you know, back then, whenever I'd usually play a board game, I'd always wish it could come to life. Uh, like, Candyland coming to life would be the closest I'd ever get to being at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, almost. And uh, the story moves along very well. And Robin Williams is perfectly cast in this film. I mean... Just, I get more nostalgia watching this film all the time, and uh, it never really loses its grasp with me. It's always going to be one of my childhood favorites. Next up is a film that was very mismarketed in the way it was being promoted, as it was very promoted as an action film, but when you really see the movie, it's not really all that. It's more of like a police procedural then an action film, and it's The Kingdom, and this stars uh, Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Garner, Jason Bateman, and Chris Cooper as a team of FBI agents who are investigating a suicide bombing at a American compound in Saudi Arabia, and they're trying to find the terrorist group that was behind it. I actually really like this film. Uh, Peter Berg actually directed this movie. He also directed Hancock, The Rundown, and one of my favorite sports movies, Friday Night Lights, and he's directing the upcoming Battleship movie. I think if you're a total action film fanatic, you're gonna have to be a little bit patient because the huge payoff of all the action happening, it doesn't really happen until the last act or so. But when the action does kick in, that's when the movie, it just kicks into overdrive and you really enjoy it from that point on. And you really learn how cool of a guy Jamie Foxx is in this film because even with all the grenades going off with RPGs, explosions, and bullets firing everywhere, he still keeps his shades on. So all he needs to do then is just walk away from explosion happening behind him, not flinching. He'll be one of the coolest guys on the planet then. Detective! Oh god! Oh no! What's in the box? If you couldn't tell from those terrible impressions right there, the last DVD I picked up is Seven. I mean, just what a great and really dark serial killer film. It's directed by David Fincher. This is one of his earliest films and it's still one of my favorites. You got these two detectives, Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt, and they're tracking this killer who is supposedly killing people by the seven deadly sins. This was the first movie to really showcase David Fincher's talent as a director. He knocks this film out of the park with his dark and very gritty style. The city in this movie, it rains almost every day. There's hardly any sunshine in it and all the tension that just builds up to the big confrontation in the end and the big surprise, it's just perfect. And any true fan of David Fincher would always have this movie in their collection. Okay, so that's all the DVDs. The rest are Blu-rays, and a lot of them came from the Best Buy trade and save that I did on the second to last day it was happening. But my first two were deals at Target. And the first one I picked up to carry on the topic of 300 subscribers is ironically 300 on Blu-ray. And this movie just looks amazing on Blu-ray. I mean, say what you want to say about this movie, but I really like it because it is a die-hard action film fanatic's uh, 
what Dream Almost because it is so awesome in its action. It's Zack Snyder before he ended up doing Watchmen and then disappointed all of us with Sucker Punch. You can tell that the main reason that he makes these type of movies is so he can map out the Blu-ray features as quick as possible. And this has got a lot of great bonus features on it and the film looks amazing on Blu-ray. This movie was meant to be seen in this definition anyway so I haven't seen it yet on Blu-ray but I'm really looking forward to seeing this again because I haven't seen it in a while too. If they move kill them. So if you're a big film fan, I can call off of that impression right there. The last one I got at Target is The Wild Bunch. This is a notorious western film that really brought up the whole violence craze that was happening in cinema when it really picked up in the early 70s. In fact, this was released one year before the 70s started. It's directed by Sam Peckinpah, and this guy is very well known for incorporating violence as a true art form. And this movie is no exception. I've only seen parts of it. From what I've seen, it looks amazing. I've seen maybe 10 minutes of the movie movie already and this is said to be one of the greatest westerns of all time and it has some of the biggest shootouts ever put on screen especially in a western too and it's got a lot of great lines in it too like it's a bunch of outlaws who are trying to pull off one last job before like the old west really diminishes and I'm really looking forward to watching this completely because I'm really getting into Peckinpah's work uh, starting with this though but from the rest of his films the way they look I really want to see this and Straw Dogs which Straw Dogs one of the most notorious films ever made right there okay so now we're on the ones that I picked up part of the trade and save at Best Buy these was in fact the second to last day it was happening and the first one I ended up picking up was Middleman and this is in a very underrated film in my opinion it stars Luke Wilson as a typical businessman he's married has a couple kids but he comes across these two idiots who somehow invent internet pornography and it's the journey through these three different characters the way they take in which uh, well you know what happens uh, it's the road of this becoming a big thing of uh, the 90s of course too the only real gripe I have with this movie though is that it has a directing style that really mirrors the way Scorsese would make a movie like this, like a typical journey film of like a business starting up or anything, or even Guy Ritchie's fast-paced style. Just It really mirrors the style of this film, but that's the only thing that's just a minor detraction. It's still a very well-made film. It's got very good performances. It's funny off and on. It's very thrilling, too. It's an entertaining movie. Like, not many people saw this because it didn't really have a wide release in theaters at all, and it was gone before we knew it, but check it out if you can because I saw this maybe about a month and a half ago or so, and now I've got it, but... It's a very entertaining film to say the least, so definitely check this one out. Yet another movie that Keanu Reeves plays a cop in and he still sounds like a surfer even though he's in a world of gangsters and backstabbing cops. It's Street Kings and I got this just because it is a total man movie. It's a two hour contest between every single one of these cops trying to be the bigger badass out of, the th out of all of them. Yo, Keanu Reeves in this movie, some of his lines are just so laughably horrible in it, but it is still funny at the same time. What's up, my homies? And then when his former partner is dying in front of him, stay with me, man. Cut the surfer talk, dude. Still, besides Keanu Reeves acting like he usually does, it is a fun movie. Like, y if you get over for how completely ridiculous it is, it is a really good action movie, actually. It's a very ridiculous movie, like I said, but still fun, as long as you can get can get over Keanu Reeves' line delivery in this. I'm a huge fan of sports movies and basketball movies I don't typically get into, but this is the film that really started the underdog tradition of films, and it's Hoosiers. Now, the main reason I did get this, though, is because it has Gene Hackman and Dennis Hopper in it. The main reason I did get it for it was Dennis Hopper, because that guy was just really notorious in his career, but this was one of his best performances from what I remember, and I haven't gotten around to watching it yet, but... Even though I know how it's pretty much going to end, I'm sure I'll enjoy it, especially because it's a basketball film. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. By the way, go Heat, because the Mavs beat my Lakers. Not many movies I have in my collection are musical films, like musical biopics for that matter, but this is uh, Walk the Line, and uh, I know a lot of people have probably seen this already, but Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon make this movie because not only do they really exhibit the characters that they play in this Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash but they do their own singing and it's really good in this film like they both can really sing and it only dismays me that Joaquin Phoenix can't be in as great movies like these today because of what he did before with that publicity stunt. I just wish he can go back to acting in more movies like this. Alright, for those of you who don't know Timothy Oliphant, the actor, I'm going to admit something. I kind of developed a mad crush on that guy. As, as ashamed as I am to say that, I had to just pick up this show because he's been 
widely praised in it. It's justified season one. I haven't seen any episodes of it yet. The character he plays in this, U.S. Deputy Marshal Raylan Givens, he brings on his own type of justice in a Stetson hat, which is awesome, of course. The show just finished its second season. I really want to watch it, though, because it looks so good. And the main reason I did get it was because of Timothy Alphon. The guy is such an underrated actor. I mean, he was uh, the spirit of the West in Rango. He was the most entertaining character in A Perfect Getaway. And, I mean, come on, he was in Deadwood, too. He was the lead role in that. I mean, this guy's just got such a cult status as an actor that he needs more roles. And, of course, I had to save the best for last. It's a movie I already have in my DVD collection, but as John for the Foot Pick would say, I just have to double dip it. And one of my friends on here, Film Recall, already beat me to it, so I just had to have it. It's A Clockwork Orange on Blu-ray, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's probably always going to be my favorite Kubrick movie. Malcolm McDowell was fantastic in it. If you look in here, like, you know, something fell up, but what the heck. But there's a lot of different things that you get to see on Blu-ray, like, as a bunch of photos, uh, like, more in-depth of, like, the photos on set as well. Like, and you get this documentary right here, the Stanley Kubrick Life in Pictures for free with it. And then there's the disc right here, just, God, what a movie. I mean, I love this film so much. It's been 40 years since it released, and this is basically the 40th anniversary edition on Blu-ray. And, God, just, what a film. If you have not seen this yet, see it right now. All right, so that's all the DVDs and Blu-rays for you guys. I thank you all for watching. Also, make sure to check out those channels that I mentioned before. And uh, I'm going to be doing blog TVs more often, which they might start tomorrow or so. If you like this video, of course, subscribe to my channel to check out more of my reviews and my other DVD and Blu-ray update before. So in the meantime, I'm Tyler from Kelly Critic Reviews, and I'll see you guys in just a few days. Or see you guys later. Whatever works.